Jiangmen, hometown of many overseas Chinese, is a moderately large city in Guangdong Province, South China. Along with the advances in production, this city has been changing a good deal in the past two years. New residential quarters. The houses are better than those built in the past, both in construction and design. This being the hometown of many overseas Chinese, some of the new apartment buildings here are reserved for sale to overseas Chinese or their dependents, with all property rights belonging to the buyer. Newly built schools and children's centers provide good educational facilities for youngsters. has been developed into an excellent spot for recreation and relaxation. Recently, we visited Pei Changhui, a former high-ranking Guomindang general who revolted and crossed over during the War of Liberation. 85-year-old Pei Changhui is in excellent health and spirit. He is now a member of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. His wife and son are now in Taiwan. He himself lives in Chongqing with his granddaughter Pei Li Zhen and her husband Wen Shui Hua. His five-year-old great-granddaughter, Xiao Xia, provides him with a lot of entertainment. Even so, he often thinks about his dear ones in Taiwan, with whom he has been separated for so many years. On holidays and festivals, one thinks even more about one's dear ones. These words fully express Tai Changhui's feelings today. Shops in a number of cities are beginning to sell goods from Taiwan, the first time this has happened in 30 years. Products from Taiwan are displayed together with those produced on the mainland. Taiwan products are much welcomed here, and people hope that Taiwan will soon be reunited with the motherland. Yi Xi Bin, a technician at the Liaoning Province Silkworm Research Bureau, has for many years been studying the problem of thoracic and abdominal transparent disease in tussa silkworms, and has come up with some good results. Tussa silk is a special Chinese product. More tussa cocoons are produced in China than in any other country in the world. The disease is a new one, and since it is highly infectious, it poses a grave threat to the industry. Yi Bin and the group he works with 
has made a systematic study of the cause, development, pathological changes, transmission and prevention of the disease. They found that the microbe responsible for the disease is a new kind of streptococcus, which they have named Tussa streptococcus. They also discovered that the disease can be prevented by disinfecting the surface of Tussa eggs with sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. The treatment is cheap, highly effective, safe and easy to apply. Tussa farmers who have used the treatment are all in favor of it. There are many art lovers among workers and staff members in China, and more and more facilities are being provided for them to develop their talents. Like textile worker Wang Min, many girls love to dance. For them, there are dancing classes with professional instructors at the workers' cultural palaces. Accountant Fan Xue Zhu, a music lover, plays the contrabass in the amateur's orchestra. This electrician's name is Teng Xinhua, and this is what she looks like on the stage. Mechanic Yu Guangwei is both a good worker and an excellent singer. Right now he is performing a Taiwan folk song he has just learned. <laughs> China is a multinational country with 55 minority nationalities alongside the majority Hans. Each nationality has its own dances, distinctive in form, style and content.
dance is the peacock dance of the Thai nationality living along China's southern border. Among the Thais, the peacock symbolizes peace, happiness, and good luck. Salah people live mainly in Qinghai and Gansu provinces in China's northwest. One of their heroes is a girl called Alima. She is noted for her wisdom, courage, and industriousness. People sing praises to her and set her up as an example. of the Uyghur people is called feeding lambs. a nomadic people in North China, today still live chiefly by livestock raising. An instrument
instrumental orchestra of the Uyghurs, whose home is in Xinjiang in China's northwest. nationality in China's Northeast has this dance, which is called Sharing Out the Harvest. Fighting Bulls, a dance by the Shui people in southwest China. are the Xiaoba people who live in the southern part of the Tibet Autonomous Region. This dance, Spring Comes to the Xiaoba, is rich in local color.
Ghana is a multinational country with 55 minority nationalities alongside the majority Hans. Each nationality has its own dances, distinctive in form, style and content. This is the peacock dance of the Thai nationality living along China's southern border. Among the Thais, the peacock symbolizes peace, happiness and good luck. Our people live mainly in Qinghai and Gansu provinces in China's northwest. One of their heroes is a girl called Alima. She is noted for her wisdom, courage, and industriousness. People sing praises to her and set her up as an example. of the Uyghur people is called feeding lambs.
once a nomadic people in North China, today still live chiefly by livestock raising. An instrumental orchestra of the Uyghurs, whose home is in Xinjiang in China's northwest. nationality in China's northeast have this dance, which is called sharing out the harvest. Fighting Bulls, a dance by the Shui people in southwest China. These are the Xiaoba people, who live in the southern part of the Tibet Autonomous Region. This dance, Spring Comes to the Xiaoba, is rich in local color.
Jimei School of Navigation was founded 60 years ago by the late Mr. Tan Ka Ki, a patriotic overseas Chinese. Alumni, now working in China or abroad, as well as faculty and students, gather to celebrate the school's 60th anniversary. On this day of celebration, people cherish the memory of Mr. Tan Ka Ki, who devoted much of his time and energy to education in his motherland. The school has kept up high teaching standards, which is why its graduates are welcomed and trusted in the maritime world. Physical training is stressed in this school so that the trainees have the physical qualities necessary for long ocean trips. Wood ears, a type of edible fungus, are widely used in Chinese cookery and as a tonic in Chinese medicine. Fangxian County in Hubei province is situated deep in the mountains. The many forests here and the moderate climate contribute to making the region one of China's major producers of wood ears. Wood ears are grown on wooden frames. Formerly, cultivators relied on natural dissemination of spores. Now, wood ears are seeded artificially, and scientific growing methods have considerably raised both the quantity and quality of the crops. Present, Fangxian County produces about 10% of all the wood ears grown in China. Fei Yin Tao is an expert in Chinese traditional martial arts, and everyone in his family practices them. His wife, Liu Yinghua, does Tai Ji Chuan, known abroad as Chinese shadow boxing. He has also taught his grandchildren how to use swords. Fei Yin Tao is nearly 70 years old, but he practices every single day. His youngest son, Fei Yuliang, has learned the form of boxing known as drunken boxing.
His 20-year-old daughter, Fei Yujiao, is exceptionally skilled in the art called qigong. A slab of stone weighing several hundred kilograms is placed on her and five men stand on top of it. Amazingly, she can still sing. There's no need to worry about her. With her skill at Qigong, she can support this weight without any danger. Professor Zheng Cheng Kui, director of the Institute of Oceanology under the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is an expert on marine algae. For 50 years, Professor Zheng has traveled up and down China's coastline, studying and investigating marine plant life. Every time he comes back from a trip to the sea, he starts at once to analyze and mount the specimens he has collected. The ocean can supply man with a great deal of high-protein food, but very little of it has been put to use up to now. A pet project of Professor Zung's, one on which he has been working for several decades, is to turn the ocean into a gigantic farm. assistants have made a series of studies and bold experiments in connection with China's production of kelp and laver, a type of edible seaweed. Today, as far as cultivating techniques and overall production of kelp and laver are concerned, China ranks among the foremost countries in the world.
Each of China's 55 nationalities has its own way of appearing beautiful. nationality of Yunnan province decorate their hair with strings of brightly colored flowers. of the Sani nationality, on the other hand, construct elaborate headdresses of richly colored cloth. According to Sani legends, the designs of these pieces were originally inspired by the rainbow. Hair ornaments of the Bai nationality come in many different styles. There are more than 20 nationalities living in Yunnan province, and each has its own characteristic hair decorations. This 500,000 volt ultra high voltage transformer manufactured by the Shenyang transformer plant is the highest voltage transformer made in China at the present time. Its production marks a new stage of development in China's transformer manufacturing industry. This transformer will be installed as part of a new 500,000 volt ultra high voltage transmission line in northeast China. One of the current goals of China's development is to increase her forested areas from the present 12.7% of the land surface to 30 percent. This is the sapling raising facility of the Da Xingguo Forestry Bureau in northeast China. In this plastic-covered greenhouse, water and ventilation are mechanically provided in a way which best encourages the development of the young trees. New techniques have been adopted for raising saplings. The growing period has been shortened, the survival rate has been improved, and the quality of the saplings is excellent. Now afforestation can be carried out during the three seasons of spring, summer, and autumn. Mr. Liu Jiyo is a noted Chinese painter.
While he paints a wide variety of subjects, his specialty is painting animals. Sometimes he paints with broad, free-flowing strokes, and other times with meticulous care. He always paints according to a carefully thought out plan. Mr. Liu's works are often exhibited internationally. His children are also good painters. Here is the eldest daughter, Liu Chang. An eagle painted by his son, Liu Nan, was also exhibited abroad. The youngest daughter, Liu Kuei, who paints wolfhounds, has been praised for her skill. Where did they get their interest in painting animals? Liu Jiyou's father is the late, well-known painter, Liu Kuei Lin. Liu Kuei Ling's animals are uniquely lifelike. This is truly a three-generation family of painters. This is the Chen Yi Cup. It commemorates the late comrade Chen Yi, honorary president of the Chinese Wei Qi Association. In Japan and the West, Wei Qi is often called Go. This cup will be awarded to the winner of the 1980 Wei Qi Invitational Tournament for Senior Citizens. Vice Premier Fang Yi of the State Council is attending the competition. Vice Chairman Gapoi Gawang Jigme of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. Return compatriot from the United States, Mr. Miao Yuntai. Members of the Standing Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, Sung Shi Lian and Du Yu Min. Competitors must be at least 50 years old. The only exception is Chen Yi's youngest son, Chen Xiaolu. His opponent is Xu Chun Ru, an associate professor of engineering physics at Tsinghua University. In earlier days, commander of the Navy, Ye Fei, often played Wei Qi with Chen Yi. His opponent here is Sung Tao, president of Xinhua News Agency. After many tough matches, Ye Fei became the winner of the Chen Yi Cup. <laughs>